One, two, three. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're already ready, man. We just check who what to do. Yep, yep. Who does this? Just go ahead and sign. Right. Should we do uh, Cry Baby? Yes, sir. Sure. Ready, Scooter? Ready? You got all the sound checks. It's about a quarter of two right now on Tuesday. Hopefully in about 15 minutes, we'll be getting our furniture here. And we'll get our brand new furniture. We'll be able to start to set the place. It'll be good. And then uh, that's about it. We're going to try to clean it up and make it look real good. This evening, we're going to start hanging the art and the funk on the wall. Mr. Bill Naram will be here to do that. The furniture will probably be here in just a little bit. Two o'clock, they said they're going to try to get going over here. But I've got a crew in the back that can help you guys start pulling whatever you need up here as you need it and maybe i don't know where you want to start but i was thinking the bar up high and start working our way yeah, down low the bar's the first thing to get um we bar? got photos here of the downloaded of the original hanging over there so i don't want to be a bull in the tank shop with all that, that neon everywhere <laughs> cracking it we bought a bunch of hangers bought a bunch of supplies some of that black chain Right paint pad. We need to probably get with Chris. I don't know that Chris is in charge of all the employees. And Pauline, and they, they're the managers. They can help you with all the, the uh, employees and pulling down what you need. And I think they've got everything kind of in certain areas upstairs as to what room it came out of. So they can kind of pull it out and get it somewhat similar to what you had before. Um, whatever happened with the uh, old uh, backstage star and uh, woodwork and uh, it's a crack, split, it's not in good shape. I don't know if it's going to look, I don't know. We can, we can look at, see what we can salvage out of it. I think it's back in the back room, you can take a look at it. It's kind of a different color of wood than everything else too, the way the stain is. Yeah, I, I couldn't see it really fitting in. Yeah, I love that drill. It's here. It's about 10 minutes. He's putting up the track lighting to shine. Didn't paint the uh, ceiling. No problem. Oh, now we're going to leave it silver. He, t he talked me out of it because he said it sweats and it goes and the paint takes, it peels off sometimes. And I just said, you know, I don't even real sure what color to do. So silver seems to be intact, intact right now with the outside. Oh, yes. Oh, uh, what about, I didn't notice, uh, the star neon in the little room back there? Star neon, still out there. So, where would you like for me to start? <laughs> well, as soon as we can access the... We brought it all back here and, and got it out of the way. Uh, to do the remodel, and now we need to move it back. And uh, it's, uh, it's going to be a Chinese fire drill. I don't guess that's politically correct anymore, is it? A uh, hippie hullabaloo. How about hayseed hip? Anyway, we'll have as much fun as we can. I think that area back there was bar. Yeah, that's right. the bar here. The bar, bar so clock. There's the big clock. There's the propeller that hung over the bar. Uh, the bar didn't really have. Oh, that section's one, two, three. This is the bar. This was the stuff that was hanging on the bar in the entry area. Okay. Except for the propeller. And I'm trying to remember how the lights are pretty much hung, but you can see like I, I double anchored them with hard wire. Because like I said, the third light that we, the chain snapped on it, it was old. Oh, yeah. So I didn't want to take the blame for 
some of this stuff was in the bar area too, like a, some of the decor. Okay. So I think this was pretty much the whole bar area. <laughs> yeah. All right. Anything? Here's transformers for some of the neons. They're marked with what they go with. And we do have a crew to get this down to. Um, the yeah, big so the hams. first thing would be everything related to the bar needs to go down there and get the bar dressed out. Where is the big? It's the most difficult. Okay. This big, this is the big yeah. transformer. This hams beer was right by the entryway. The transformer's a beast. Yeah, it's uh, got a rheostat and all for it. Yeah. It's on the table back. Here it is. This is the hams. And that thing's yeah. 20 pounds. This pearl, yeah. So pretty much this stuff in this order, in this area, was the bar area. So we'll bring this down first. Yeah. And, uh, I don't know if pictures turn out. Actually, turn out pretty good. And you see, I mean, it's stained. And, yeah. and I don't know if we want to put that in a nice new remodel. I don't think we can go with it for now, but when... Someone we'll put a big blob of spinach in her mouth. We got the spinach off, but I guess the liquid soaked around her lips and stuff. It just looks, looks a little we'll tacky. It's a placeholder and then we'll make enough to get a redo. Uh, you know, we've got, we need to find a place the... Uh, This was this, this all goes the stuff that goes with the new ones on that wall. Janus. That's the Janus with the that we had go behind the curtains. Yeah, but I don't know if there's a curtain on the wall anymore to put it behind. Yeah, yeah there's a section. Is there? Okay. So, but we'll uh, we'll start getting these guys on there. We'll start moving the stuff down. Okay. Now with the neons, do you want the neons right now, or do you want to wait till we get the tables in the restaurant and place them on the tables? Yeah, I'll hold the neons for last. We get the... Okay. No, no. I don't know if they're using for anything. Um, if there's going to be any problems, just let me know. We've got good cameras. Okay. We can come in that, you know, just back and forth. We can load a truck or something. Yeah, we'll Same here, Dave. Yeah, it's working. Yeah, Dave Whitney has a truck, too. Maybe it's five parts. Yeah, but if we get a truck, it's just... Good reality show drama going on. <laughs> I just don't know if we can do this. I don't this know. Off. Really do this. <laughs> Who's going to get thrown off Thread Gills Island? Bill Nero. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. And it's south by southwest. And I got a poster I got to finish for the show here on Friday night. Who did the Rocky Erickson poster? Oh, it's pretty good. It's I liked it. You know, that's going to be a show. That's going to be a good show. Well, not his own. That's Thursday night. They're having a little thing tomorrow, right? And tomorrow's the music awards. And then a show here. So there'll be a show here and then Thursday, and then Friday's the Uncle Walt show. This is the closest I'm going down south unless we go to the world headquarters down there for some reason. <laughs> I'm not getting anywhere near <coughs> south. By. Well, he did one, he did mention something about including the other joint into it. Um, <coughs> and the ice cream social, because it hadn't been publicized, but uh, Billy Gibbons is supposed to sit in with uh, Rocky Erickson. During the ice cream social. So, that's worth catching. It'd be good on video. Um, Flowers. This is what we got going. So, what you're looking at here is <coughs> the way it was. And all that's got to go back up. For them to open for a performance, possibly tomorrow. It's going to be tight just to 
So the next next thing is all this has got to get moved up to the front. Take a crew to do that. Once we get it all located up there, then we start slapping it up. They changed a lot of the hanging arrangements, so we're going to be improvising, and that's going to make it even more difficult. But, uh, but you're looking forward to it, aren't you? Oh, I'm looking forward to it. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Enthusiasm. Oh, boy. Eddie was telling me about your sister. I don't think you ever mentioned your sister to me ever. Oh, Heidi, yeah, she's coming down. She's coordinating the tributes to Walter, her uh, deceased husband from Uncle Walt's band. And they got a tribute to Walter at the Music Awards on Wednesday night and then uh, showcasing uh, Walter's talents uh, through uh, David Ball and the original members of the Uncle Walt's band, the last remaining living member of the band that was Champ Hood and Walter and David. And um, you got like, oh, I don't know, 12, 15 uh, notable performers from the area as well as Walter's son and David Ball's daughter are gonna be performing. Uh, Kerry Rodriguez, who's been out with uh, Chip Taylor. You got uh, Jimmy Lefave and uh, Mandy Mercier and all people familiar with that grew up with uh, Walt's tunes. In fact, one of the surprises is that uh, Lyle Lovett's coming in. To, uh, he's an old friend of Walter's. Uh, Walter gave him a start, in fact. Uh, David Ball has gone on to a pretty successful solo career now in the country and western field and I'd never really had uh, a call to reactivate the old uh, Uncle Walt's material, so this will be the first time for him on that. It's going to be quite a show. It'll be quite a week. The whole South By is going on right now. Over 1,300 bands playing this week in Austin. It's gonna, just trying to get the poster out for Uncle Walt. I'm having to pull strings with the different printing and uh, scanning services and everything because everybody's booked trying to get everything out uh, promoting their South By events. Um, hey, for Paris as well. Mm-hmm. You get a, uh, a peacock. Two, two peacocks, a pair of peacocks. Oh, man. And they would roost in the tree right outside the bedroom windows. And they'd start up in the morning like somebody was killing a baby man, and screaming their heads off. Those are the most obnoxious animals, man. And they sound like somebody's being murdered, you know. <laughs> First thing in the morning. I'd, roosters are one thing cockadoodle will do in the morning, but people being murdered in the morning is just help ah, help <laughs> engineer the man's field dam and so he knew exactly where the lake level was going to fill to and he bought property back around Volendi and retired back there and waited on the lake to fill up and back then you know there were a couple of uh, going businesses were uh, raising earthworms and raising parakeets so he went in the parakeet business built all these huge uh screened in aviaries and just had thousands of par parakeets and the bottom fell out of the market he couldn't sell any parakeets so he just had this and he'd cull through i mean they, and they keep making more you know they just keep laying eggs and more and more parakeets and uh they were getting wild they were flying all over the place and he selectively go through and you'd find a parakeet every now and then that would learn to talk and so he had this select cage of talking parakeets it's pretty annoying <laughs> A white metal storage shed size can, you know. On the top of Mount Lars. On the top of Mount Lars with the big tower up above that. And that was the put in point for the cable for uh, Austin. And the only way we could get access to launch ACTV, um, the engineer would drive out there and meet us, open the door, we go in, physically disconnect the coax cable that was the feed from San Antonio, and it was a duplicate of the Austin Channel. Take it, unscrew it, screw our coax cable onto it, and start the deck up. Uh, as it evolved, we had, because uh, <laughs> the engineer was lazy too, we had uh, uh, connectors put on the outside of the building, so we could just drive up to the building and, and wait on time, and then they would automatically take off uh, the San Antonio feed, and we'd just feed right into the side of the building. And we started doing live uh, music casts from up there. 
and eventually um, they were able to get offices uh, down in Austin and feed up to it. But yeah, you had to, and it was all Caliche roads straight up this mountain, um, trying to get up there with the van and all the equipment. And, uh, it was it was precarious just getting in and out of there. So what did y'all do up there? That was so interesting. It was a great site for doing live concerts because you had the whole backdrop of Austin below you in the valley looking down on it all. Um, but we programmed, uh, uh, I think we had two hours, three days a week, something like that, uh, initial programming to launch ACTV. Um, and it was that. It was just physically driving the tape right up to the and the equipment right up to the building. Uh, plugging in, physically disconnecting uh, a feed and, and feeding our signal down into Austin. And uh, it was very unique because nobody else in the country had that kind of uh, um, opportunity. I mean, we worked with groups in New York. Uh, Syracuse had a little small, uh, basically a networked uh, condominium complex. New York had a few little private things. Um, they got cable going much later than Austin had cable. We already we had the advantage of Lyndon Johnson uh, had put cable in here back in the 60, early 60s, I guess. And um, so Austin had more cable subscribers than New York City. So we had a bit bigger audience than the New York City uh, videographers did. Um, and most, most cable companies were reluctant to even uh, attempt to see if our signal could carry across the uh, the cable, it wouldn't carry across broadcast, it wasn't stable enough, you couldn't put it on broadcast back then. We would, we would shoot with our handheld cameras into a monitor display and then put the big old studio cameras focused on the display and rescan it to go across um, on broadcast when we did some broadcast shows.